Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we got the top three money saving mods that we're gonna be doing here on the S650 with the Dark Horse. Now, I always try to preface these types of videos. It's very much so personal preference when we talk about mods, right? And these are all things that um, after like cruising the forums and things like that, I've seen people were having issues on their cars. So these are things that I wanted to address immediately, as well as a couple of things that I like to do every single time I get a new vehicle. It just helps me save money down the road. So we'll jump into what those are. But first, let's talk about what we've done to the dark horse over the last couple of days or so. Now, one of the first things that I do whenever I get a new car is obviously get the windows tinted. Here in Arizona, it's super hot. The sun is pretty abusive. So the first thing I like to do is get the window tint all dialed in. With this car specifically, much like the M2 and just about every other car that I get when they're brand new, we went the 5% Lumar ceramic on the sides and on the back glass as well. So like I said, 5% on those windows. And then something I always do on every vehicle, especially here in Arizona, is the ceramic windshield tint. We went with 50% here, not 5%, but 50% on the front windshield. And basically it makes it so I don't even have to wear sunglasses when I'm inside the car. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a very nice driving experience now that the, uh, now that the tint is all kind of dialed in and ready to go. Uh, but like I said, this is the, one of the first things that I do to new cars when I get them. Now, obviously we got some other uh, aesthetic mods coming in. Well, I wouldn't even say aesthetic, but protection based mods that we're going to be doing. Obviously we need to PPF the front end and I don't know how I'm going to go about getting the PPF done here because there is some of this like matte vinyl on, uh, on the hood of the car. So I don't know if we're just gonna do like a partial hood up to here and the front bumper and like maybe the high impact spots uh, behind the tires or if we're gonna go a different route on the hood PPF here. But stay tuned for all that stuff. I'll let you guys know how that goes. But outside of that, that is what we've done to the car so far. I'm very, very excited to, uh, to start modding this thing and kind of making it my own. That's what I love most about cars. And uh, yeah, so speaking of mods, let's go ahead and jump into those top three mods that we're gonna be doing on the car today. Now, some of the mods that we're gonna be talking about today, yes, they will potentially save you money in the future or later down the road, but also there are some preventative stuff that we're gonna be putting on the car today, starting with this first mod and these are all pretty simple pretty cost effective so even if you don't have a big big budget to go ahead and mod your s650 you'll still be able to, still be able to uh to grab a couple of these things because they are pretty cheap now uh, the first one is going to be from lmr we have their jack pad kit uh, if you've peeked under your s650 recently you'll know that the jack points that come factory aren't the best so what we're going to be doing is installing these uh these jack pads on the car today to uh to help assist us in being able to uh, to lift the car and uh, not cause any damage to pinch welds things like that that's going to be the first thing that we're going to be installing on the car the next thing is from a company called diy van and basically when you take off the front tire on the s650 behind that there is a little section, there's like kind of a big opening and a bunch of rocks and debris can get tucked in there. Uh, and especially being here in Arizona, in the desert, uh, this could fall victim to, you know, a bunch of rocks, debris, dirt, getting in behind the, uh, the rocker panels. And uh, you could just hear stuff vibrating around. So that's something I wanted to avoid. So this company prints these 3D parts and uh, you just go ahead and slap them on with some JB Weld. So that's what we're gonna be doing also today. And then finally, my favorite mod. This is something that I do immediately, but with the S650, we have something that's kind of interesting. And obviously we're gonna be putting the Uniden R8. Uh, I'll leave links for all this stuff, guys, down below in the description if you wanted to check it out for yourself. No affiliate links or anything like that, uh, unless it's through Amazon. But we're gonna be using a blend mount to go ahead and mount this radar detector and it tucks it right up 
underneath the mirror. And then we also, if you don't know, in the S650, you have a USB port right behind the mirror. And this is a converter that goes from five volt to 12 volt. And it should power the, uh, the radar detector quite nicely, but it gives you a very clean look. You don't have to worry about suction cups on the windshield with the blend mount. And you don't have to worry about those fat wires hanging down to your cigarette lighter as well. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into the install. All right guys, so we have that jack pad in the front passenger side all installed. And basically you see that other bolt there. Uh, so there's two bolts uh, for the K member. And all you do is remove the forward most facing bolt. And then you just go ahead and uh, use that jack pad kind of as a spacer. And then you just bolt it back in, torque it down to 85 foot pounds and you're good to go. Now we got the uh, the rear ones installed. This one is a little bit easier because you just use the supplied bolt and you just bolt into a hole. Now, let's see if I could see it. Uh, this is the factory lift point right there. And then this is where you can lift from now. So nice sturdy base for your jack. So now that those jack pads are installed on all four sides, went ahead and removed the tire so you guys can see what we're gonna be working on in this next mod. But you can see here, this is your, essentially your rocker panel here, this piece of plastic, um, or like your side skirt. But this is completely open here, and that's what we want to avoid, right? We wanna be able to cover that. So what I'm gonna do now is get this all cleaned up, and then we'll, Get to kind of test fitting that part and then go from there we've got this piece all test fitted in there and as you can see it butts up to the fender liner really really well um, we did go ahead and clean up i tried to get as much rocks out of this rocker panel when i was doing this before you could hear all the rocks just jiggling around in there but it's so weird that they uh they just have this random opening in in the fender liner so uh so yeah now that that's all good I'm gonna put the wheel back on because in the kit, they supply a couple foam blocks that help you wedge that against the, uh, the fender liner while it's drying. So, uh, and it uses the, uh, the tire as like pressure between that and the foam block. I'll show you guys here in a second, but that is uh, the test fit right there. So let's go ahead and get this thing on there. I've gone ahead and installed this first side. So this is the passenger side. And as you can see, that little foam block is kind of wedged between the tire and that 3D printed part, just holding tension against there, giving the JB Weld some time to dry. And then we got one on the bottom here with, uh, with a couple pieces of wood because it wasn't tall enough to, uh, to fit that. So it's all kind of wedged in there. Now we're just gonna let that dry and then we'll move on to the driver's side. All right, so it's kind of dark in here, but we got the blend mount all installed with the Uniden R8 and it just keeps it tucked and out of the way. And we did go ahead and put that in. Again, there's just a USB back there and then that wire just runs uh, to the other side there. And I'll probably get some zip ties and kind of like try to tuck those wires out of view a little bit better. Uh, either that or I'm kind of curious to see if it turns off with auxiliary power. So that's something that I know that when I had this in my M2, it would take about 10 minutes for this to turn off, but I just want to make sure that it will turn off before I keep that plugged in all night. Uh, but I'll let you guys know how that goes. So I've waited about 30 minutes and I uh, just unplugged this, but essentially this plug doesn't turn off with auxiliary power. So potentially could be something that drains the battery. So as it sits right now, just to kind of give you guys an idea, I'll probably have to unplug the uh, the radar detector after every time I get out of the car so that it doesn't drain the battery. Uh, and then potentially figure out a way to just hardwire it into uh, like the, the mirror mount. So uh, yeah, still to be determined on that. But for now, this is kind of the, the solution that we're gonna go with. It's not ideal, so I'll definitely be fixing that rather quickly. All right, guys, so there we have it. All three of those quick, easy, cost-effective, and potentially money-saving mods all completed here on the Dark Horse. It's a little bit dirty. It's been raining the past couple days, so I'm gonna get the interior cleaned up, 
and I'm pro I probably plan on uh, ceramic coating a lot of the surfaces in here, including these seats. Uh, if you guys want to see that kind of stuff too, let me know down below in the comment section of this video. Just trying to gauge what the uh, the average S650 guy in terms of content wants to see. Uh, but yeah, we need to get this car cleaned up because it is dirty. That being said, guys, I did get a quick notification that towards the end of April, the Whipple superchargers for this car should be shipping. And that is something that we are definitely, definitely going to do on this car in particular. Because if you go with the stage one three liter Whipple, you can still retain factory warranty, which is pretty crazy. You can almost double the horsepower, I think that on those Whipple kits, at least stage one, they're pushing out like, I don't know, between 750 and 800 horsepower, somewhere around there, depending on if you're using octane boosters, things like that. But almost double the amount of horsepower that you have on the car while retaining the factory warranty. Now, if you've been watching for some time, obviously we did a bunch of performance mods to the M2 and we plan to do that with this car as well. And uh, yeah just kind of make it our own. That is going to wrap up our video for the day. Hopefully you guys got some value out of it. Hopefully you learned a couple things. I know it was a little bit hard to kind of see the installs on the things that we we're installing on the car today. So it was hard for me to, to get kind of any footage of me doing the actual installs, but they're all super, super easy. I think the, uh, the jacking plates took me like 10, 15 minutes to install. The little things in the in the like the wheel wells there took a little bit longer just because you need time for that jb weld to set and then of course the radar detector went in pretty smooth uh, but we are going to have to get in there and try to figure out how we can hardwire the radar detector into the mirror so stay tuned for that stuff guys thank you all so much for tuning in to today's video and we'll catch you on the next one